You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. And then in 2010, I became Luke Mitchell's lawyer. So I've had access to the, the 36 boxes, I think it is, it's the, the, the criminal defence papers. I've never come across one shred of evidence, James, that links Luke Mitchell to the killing of Jody. Nothing. This could be possibly the biggest miscarriage of justice Scotland's ever seen. Five weeks before Jody was murdered, he was sectioned for beating Jody. Smashing up a house and having a fit. And he beats Jody and gets sectioned. Two men 300 yards away never went looking for her. Why? Luke Mitchell just walked right to the V and climbed over. The, the, the difference in statements, James, was like night and day. But by that time, they believed Mitchell was a killer. And the police are obviously telling them, listen, your statements aren't helping them. And they, they changed dramatically. How many people, in your own opinion, do you think was involved in the murder? I think one man killed her. This is only my opinion. I think one man killed her and two men went to meet their pal that day and they were just too late. And then they, then they got the killer away in a moped and the other one escaped through the woods. So how, for people watching now, how should they believe you or take your opinion as gospel? Ah. Because you are a lawyer and a legal detective, you ah. have been on the case from day one, but for pe other people who ask the questions, like why should they believe no. what you're saying? I can't, I haven't no got a motive, Jim. What's my motive? Jody Jones is gone, I'll say this on record. I've said that a few times, I've never held back. Jody Jones, John, Jody Jones' grandmother should have been charged with perverting the course of justice. She threatened Crown Witnesses, i.e. her grandson. She, she washed clothes. Who do you think killed Jody Jones? Ben Moran. On you go, Jim. Today's guest, we've got Scott Forbes. Scott boy. How you doing, Jim? Nice to meet you, Paul. Good to see you. You've just released about a long walk to justice about the Luke Mitchell murder case. Yes. Um, a lot of new evidence in there as well. You've been on this case for the very first day. First day. Luke Mitchell's always pleaded his innocence for the killing of Jody Jones. Me personally, I believe the kid's innocent as well. I was first brought onto this as well with Joe Steele. Joe Steele served over 20 years in prison. He said to me, actually says on the podcast, that he believes Luke Mitch was innocent. At the time, I thought, nah, no chance. I always thought, little weirdo, little beast, little thriller. That's what I genuinely thought at school when it was all over the papers and news. Like, oh, okay. He was a weirdo, and then he sent his information about it. And the more I looked into it, the more I realised there was no evidence against the kid. He passed a lie detector, him and his mum. I know people say, oh, they can be tricked this and that. But for two people to pass, it's like four or five million to one. There was no, um, they were going on about the mum burning the clothes, which there was no DNA of either. We'll get into all this kind of stuff with the case, but there's been a lot of unanswered questions. Like, thankfully now there's a lot more light getting shed to the boy's case. We've done the, the Channel 5 documentary, exposed it even further, but... First and foremost, how are you? I'm, I'm very well, James. Hi, very well. Uh, Joe Steele, can I, can I mention of you, Joe? Of course you can. I met Joe in um, 1993 in Sea Hall in Salton. He, he'd been up in Perth Prison with a very close friend of mine, Nori Alexander. And uh, so I met Joe, a wee fresh face man, the big glasses, right? And I was on the football field the night he escaped. One of the funniest nights, generally, I've ever had in my life. I went back into prison, you can imagine five guys escaping through a hole in a fence. And then... Um, Oh, so he, <laughs> he gave me the funniest night ever. People online talk about Joe Steele, speaking about Luke Mitchell, and they think uh, Joe Steele is an intellectual. He, he, how can he say he's innocent? What is? Joe Steele's got an insight into prison and into human nature like most people will never have. So for Joe Steele to come and say Luke Mitchell's innocent, it's somebody he should be listened to, in my opinion. Detractors um, wanted to rubbish Joe Steele. Me personally, when I was asked, I'd see that podcast. I thought Luke, Joe Steele speaking speaks volumes. I mean, personally, that's only my opinion. Joe Steele saying Luke Mitchell never killed that wee girl speaks volumes for me. I'll tell you my opinion. Luke Mitchell did not kill Jody Jones. Um, I've no got a doubt about that. Listen, he's a wee weird boy, what you're saying. Um, his, his mother's quite weird, but you don't know if she was weird before all this pressure or after it. And I understand why the police maybe targeted him. 
but it's 17 years I've been involved in this as a boy for the street first and foremost. And then in 2010, I became Luke Mitchell's lawyer. So I've had access to the, the 36 boxes, I think it is, it's the, the, the criminal defence papers. I've never come across one shred of evidence, James, that links Luke Mitchell to the killing of Jody. Nothing. There's lies get told in the paper, Jane Hamilton, especially for the Daily Record there, there's a DNA link on her bra and the Crown had an agreement with the defence that they wouldn't bring it, the DNA into the court because they were in a relationship. Understandably. But that's just lies. They found a DNA piece of hair on a pair of trousers at Luke's dad's house in Livingston, right? But he hadn't been there for, I think, three weeks prior to the murder, so that was ruled out. So there was agreement on agreed evidence. Fair play. They found a mixed profile on Jody's bra. Nine nine markers. Now, in the nine markers, a mixed profile of nine people with nine DNA. And uh, they couldn't rule out Luke Mitchell. That's what they told the jury. We cannot rule out Luke Mitchell. But they couldn't rule out Joseph Jones, John Ferris, Gordon Dickey, two other suspects. And they couldn't rule out DCI Dobie, the man who led the investigation. So there's no links, forensic links whatsoever, to look to that murder. And how can that be possible, James? Yeah, like I say, it's, this could be possibly the biggest miscarriage of justice Scotland's ever seen. Like, yes. When you talk about Joe Steele, he served over 20 years for a, a crime he didn't commit. So mm -hmm. when men like that talk, he's got inside information and info that you've got to listen. And like I say, it gave me to start looking into it and then people start realising, wait a minute, is this boy innocent? And look what's happened. But it's not only that though. If he's innocent, then there's a killer on the loose. Oh, well. Yeah, uh, definitely. People ask me this many, many times a question. I got a lot of questions fired at me, some of them politely online. The ones who didn't ask politely, I, um, I just tell them, I'll fight fire with fire. I maybe shouldn't be, but I should. And uh, one of the questions I got asked often, if Luke Mitchell isn't the killer, how come nobody's ever been killed since? Well, it was a frenzied attack. It wasn't a serial killer. I've never read any psychological reports who, that say this person that killed Jody is a serial killer. They say it's a frenzied attack. Now, we have number one suspect in this, James. I'll just say him if you don't mind, right? Everybody that looks at this case, including senior police officers in Channel 5 and lawyers and QCs and forensic pathologists and scientists, they put Jody's brother as number one suspect. They put the boy Mark Kane, who I took to the police number two suspect. Now, Joseph Jones is psychotic. The attack on Jody was a psychotic, frenzied attack. That's how the police describe it. And um, he's psychotic. But so when people say, why is he never killed again? He's taken antipsychotic drugs. The maximum amount that the law permits, he takes. In addition to antipsychotic drugs, he takes sedatives, Valium, Tamazepan, whatever, right? On top of all these drugs. So 20 years he's taken the drugs, Calm, calms you, doesn't it? In jail, they used to call it the legactyl shuffle. Right, when you get a, a violent man who has episodes, shall we call them, right? Uh, they used to give him legactyl, they used to come into cell three days later be a, be a shuffle. Now, I'm not saying this man's like that now, but he's had 20 years of that, right? So that's the reason I give why there's never been another killing the same as Jody. Well, everybody thinks Luke Mitchell's locked up and that's why he wasn't a serial killer. The psychology reports in the killing of Joe, they tell you it's frenzied. Like somebody ah, flipped. And we've got number one suspect who flips quite regular. Now, I, I get no emotional when I... To see Jody's injuries, Jake, and I'm not, a, I'm not a shy man. I've seen lots of crime in my life and injury. Jody Jones' injuries are horrific. Right? It's no... Uh, Oh, listen, real horrific. They, 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 one, one side of her face is sliced in two. She's decapitated. She's got wee cuts above her eyes. We believe her wee glasses, you know, like when she's been punched or kicked or whatever and I've cut her eyes. She's decapitated. The breast is nearly cut off. She's sliced across here and she's got a defensive wound. She, when she's done that, it looks like she's done that and it's caught the back here. And, and, and it's nearly cut the hand. It looks like a machete, a machete attack like we've all seen recently in papers. And then... Um, Luke Mitchell's not got a DNA link, a blood. There's no bit of hair, there's no bit of saliva. And um, it's just, the whole thing just stinks, stinks to high heavens, pal. Um, 
That's the only answer I can give why nobody's ever been killed in the same fashion. Because the drugs worked. Do you know, like 20 years of taking the kind of drugs must have an effect. And um, that's what I, that's the reason I give back to people who ask me why is no other person being killed? I say it's because the drugs and the medication worked. In addition, <coughs> Joseph Jones was uh, paranoid with smoking cannabis. His medical records, and I will, I will show you, I'm going to make you privy, they asked me online, you can't make these things public as you know, eh? they want me to publish legal papers and I'm not willing to do that for people online, but before I leave here today, I'll sit you down and I'll show you medical records on my phone, mm -hmm. and uh, it tells you that he's a paranoid, psychotic, violent man. He gets paranoid when he smokes cannabis, right? Um, on the three days before Jody was murdered, he was smoking bucket bombs for three days solid. So he's paranoid. Five weeks before Jody was murdered, he was sectioned for beating Jody. Smashing up a hoose and having a fit. And he beats Jody and gets sectioned. And, and then they administer him the maximum amount of antipsychotic drugs for 11 days. And then they release him. Now when they release him, they tell you in his medical records, we don't want him to go back to Jody. His, his home because his mother's psychotic and his mother permits him to go upstairs and smoke bucket bongs which makes him paranormal makes him unwell and she doesn't doesn't he force him to take his medication so therefore he gets violent again four weeks after that jody's murdered in a, a frenzied episode and so <laughs> what do you say about that the thing that troubles me with that is he was never ever treated as a suspect never Why? once i don't know james he disappeared for five days but see if you're psychotic as well. Mm -hmm. Can you give a valid statement? No, nah, well, listen, that he, he, he used the, um, me, the mental health fact after Jody was murdered. He, 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 he that that evening, maybe uh, approximately half 11, the times are minutes out and people are picking up now. So, approximately 11 30 at night, he confirms his name and his address and his relationship to Jody, and then he just disappears off the scene. He was never questioned, he never spoken, and we believe he went back under the mental health. He had a mental health team. When Jody's when Luke Mitchell's trial came up on the first call-in, um, he went under his mental health team again, got excused for court, and then he done it this again the second time. <laughs> so he's never been questioned, he's never been cross-examined, his alibi his alibi was never questioned. In 2013, um the Scottish Criminal Case Review Commission. <coughs> They they write to Donald Finley, five or six five or six days seven days after Jody was killed, a man two witnesses come forward and they say a positive identification of Jody on East Houses Road followed by a man. They called the man the stocky man, right? First Mitchell man to start off here, and then they called him the stocky man, large head, uh, wavy hair, wearing a, a back backpack. Joseph Jones wore a backpack everywhere he went, carrying a large bowie knife. I did that with my hands because he was that paranoid he couldn't leave the house without having a weapon. And then, so he gets identified. One witness says that's definitely Joseph Jones and then he gets the wrong person. The person he identifies wasn't in the country. But a woman then watches Jody's funeral and says, that's the man I seen following Jody. So she picks Joseph Jones. The last man ever to see Jody alive is her brother, right? 15 minutes, 10 minutes before the police put the time in the murder. So, in 2013, the Scottish Criminal Case Review Commission write to Donald Finlay. And they asked Donald Finlay, if you had known at the time that Joseph Jones was following Jody, would you have incriminated him? And Donald Finlay tells him, um, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Um, I don't know if I would have done that, and I can't answer that. Sometimes to incriminate a a family member sometimes would look bad on a jury, so you have to assess that. So he wouldn't answer it, he wouldn't commit himself. But what Donald Finley didn't know was his medical records. Now, I'm a lawyer, well, I think I'm well trained and pretty, pretty in the know-how. If somebody comes to you and tells you that there's somebody following the girl that's been murdered, who has real serious history of violence, real, like, heavy violence against the mother, he stabbed his mum, he beat his granny, um, Oh, listen, there's, there's reports of him banging his head, ramming the head off your lamppost and blood coming from his eyes and he's still frenzied in nature. And I knew this and I had a client getting charged with I would have to incriminate that man. But Donald Finley was not aware of medical records. Now, um, so when Luke Mitchell went to trial, the jury and the public and everybody else weren't aware of the brother. They weren't aware of his medical records. 
the only way the man called Mark Kane. And uh, Mark Kane is how I got involved in this case. Just we went to a college called New Bar Labby, James. It's a mind me open prison. You know, it's a residential college. Adult education is fully of all sorts. Including myself, by the way. I'm no rubbish and people put myself in that category. You no, know, I've been through a lot of nonsense in my life and then I go to college to be at myself, go to university. But it's an open prison. You lived in a dormitory, a single room, you know, it's even looked like an open prison. A boy there, Mark Kane, very, very talented boy, very clever, brilliant musician, but very disturbed. His whole upper torso was covered in um, self farm. He had a fascination for mutilated corpses. He would sit and watch a computer and fall asleep with the methadone, and then all the women would get scared because I'm talking about like the same images I seen of Jody on a computer screen, and women got scared. Um, real disturbed boy, torture a lifetime of torturing animals, and oh, real like heavy boy. Yeah? Anyway, he comes to my house the morning after the murder. The police say we're looking for a man who's agitated, um, wants to leave the local area, and may have visible signs of a struggle. He comes into my flat, he's got scratching his eyes, my girlfriend asks him to take his glasses off, he takes his glasses off, he scratches on his face, and, and we ask him what happened, they couldn't answer it. So, people for the scheme were phoning me, Scott Mark Cain, is he and Dal Keith? They were all concerned, this boy had called Jody Jones, people who had grew up with him, people for college, people for his school, not just myself, there was people in the college, and me being the firing, for want of a better word, I take him to police. I pick him up at college, drive him to the police, and I watch him walk in the police station. The police on the record mark Mark Kane to be traced and questioned. And do you know when they question? After Luke Mitchell was found guilty. And then he's living 200 yards away from the police station. So when Mitchell went in the trial, nobody, the jury didn't know about Joseph Jones, his medical records, they didn't know about Mark Kane and his history of violence. They knew nothing. They knew nothing. All they knew is what every what they had read in the paper. You, uh, you're a lot younger than me, and then you tell me when you were a, a much younger. How many days did you pick up a paper? Mitchell was a beast. Uh, do you know within two days, two days, two days in the media, police were telling people in the media no other suspects. We're not looking for anybody else. Trial Think. by media. Try. See this case. Mm -hmm. Is it just? Do you think it's been a one massive cover-up or do you think the police have just been so slack and just automatically thought it was Luke Mitchell straight away so they, would, they weren't looking at anybody else because if you've got the facts there and, and if the brother has got all that shit previous battering the sister battering the mother uh -huh. uh, all the mad stuff like, then he's got to be like you see he's the number one suspect so how could it flip so fast but do you think it's been a total fuck up ah. from the get go, and the, the coppers have just been that daft that they've no bothered their ass because they think Luke was guilty. Hundred percent. That's my view. I've got people, intelligent people, educated, professional people think it's a cover up, and they're covered up for a police informant. Well, I'll come back to a wee bit. But nah, I'm, I'm only my opinion. Only I didn't want to go down that road because when you go down that road, James, it becomes conspiracy stuff, and, yeah. and people. It's that, too big a case it's, for a fourteen-year-old ah. lassie, Fade Al Chief ah. to be. This bad conspiracy yes, cover up, do you know what I mean? Like, See, but how could they fuck it up so badly? Oh, James, the, the whole investigation. Oh, where did they start with us? Uh, they, we'll start at the start. Like, they find Luke Mitchell. Luke Mitchell finds Jody Jones. His dog goes on the wall and all that. And then seven statements later and five weeks later, he walked directly to body. That's all lies. The, the original statements for Janine Jones' sister and Stephen Kelly, whose sperm was on, on her, and they never even investigated him. That's another story. Right, um, Stephen Kelly tells the coppers when they first arrive, I fucking take it you've been at mine first. And there'll be a lassie that I butchered. Why would you say that? In my mind. Anyway, they find the body and they go back up to the school. And they're standing at a, a, a school, Luke Mitchell's clapping his dog and all the Jones family are clapping each other. Craig Doby arrives, DCI Doby. His friend is uh, Jody's auntie. Oh, hello, Agnes. The granny, Stephen Kelly, have been over the war. The granny's cuddled Jody, so therefore anybody with common sense knows that the granny's clothes are important. They take the clothes, put them in a bag. They start driving her about Dalkeith for a police station to have coffee. They take me Luke Mitchell, they look over, they see Luke Mitchell clapping his dog. Who's that? He, oh, he found the body. And the police that visited Jody's home have got written in a notepad, Jody left with Luke. But that was wrong, she was going to meet Luke. But the police have now said, oh, he left. 
she left with him. He found the body, but they didn't ask who else found the body. So they take Luke Mitchell and they give him the full works, right? They strip him, photograph him, no scratches, no bruises. They take hair samples, dirty hair, no being washed. They take re residue from under his nails, dirty. Uh, his ankles are dirty and his wrists are dirty. So he's no scrubbed, right? Uh, but he was the, the only suspect an hour after they found Jody. Me personally think they were that arrogant. We've got him. That wee weird, those killed his girlfriend. And they've taken all these DNA samples of him and they think everybody else is okay. We've got the man. DNA will prove that. And then the 15th, they, they, they botch the whole crime scene, James. There's a, a, a police photographer. They go and they start cutting branches and they, they, they trample over where all the DNA and the blood. There's no blood. Nobody's ever found where the blood happened. And uh, nobody found out where Jody was killed. Where she was found, the forensic team say there's no sign of a struggle. Uh, how can this happen here? But they destroyed the whole thing. They rolled Jody on a p p piece of polythene. This is a police photographer, by the way. And, and they drag her maybe four metres on a polythene across a crime scene. So it's destroyed. Could she have been dead before she was put there? Ah, oh, 100%. She was carried there. She was carried there, James. There was no blood. There's no blood. See where Jodie Jones is found? She's lying at a tree. There's no blood. There's no sin, sense of uh, a struggle. Now, it's the ground's soft. It's all leaves. I'll take your walk one day. Come to Edinburgh and I'll take your walk, right? And uh, if, if you'd done that with your foot, there'd be a scrape. There was nothing. Forensic team say there's no struggle here. There was a wee line of blood along the wall, right? Genuinely had a bigger nosebleed and, a, and, a, and sparring. And, uh, and she, so where's all the five litres or six litres of blood? They never ever found it, right? Uh, the crime scenes botch. Then, then a pathologist comes. By the way, people, when you tell people, they look at you like, Scott, come on, seriously, it's the Keystone Cops. The pathologist arrives, I think, half one in the morning or two in the morning. And, and she's too fat to climb over the V in the wall, right? That's another sort of thing that has to be explored maybe later. And then um, she can't climb over the V in the wall to access Jody. So they just leave her all, like, all night in the rain. Now, all she had to do was walk a few hundred yards left or right, and you can walk into where the body is through a field, but she was too lazy, so they went home. So Jodie's now lying on a, a sheet of polythene in the rain overnight. Now, anybody with common sense knows that's the DNA finish. Eh? She's lying in a pool of water. Polythene eh, stops water going into places, but also gathers water. Eh? They come in the morning, they roll Jodie into a body bag, and they discard the polythene. They didn't test it. Eh, oh, what else do I go? The search party, Stephen Kelly, Janine Jones and Alice Walker, Jodie's grandmother. Jodie's granny is a very interesting person, by the way, right? Uh, first and foremost, she knew where to go that night. She she met Luke Mitchell walking up a path when the, when he was walking to Jodie's house. They were on the path where Jodie was found, right? She then insisted Luke, Luke go back down the path that he had walked up. Why? Nobody's ever found that. When they asked her in the high court, she says, I just did. Okay. Um, her sister and her boyfriend Stephen Kelly whose sperm's on Jodie by her full DNA profile is on Jodie belonging to her sister's boyfriend they all touch they go over the, the, the wall the granny cradles Jodie and Stephen Kelly goes over the police they allow them to go home and wash their clothes Alice Walker the grandmother then washes everybody's clothes then the, then the grandmother the police put an ABA an appeal out for two men on a moped Gordon Dickey and John Ferris there at the locus where Jodie's found exactly at the time of the murder, their best friends with Joseph, the psychotic brother. Ferris has been with him during the day. He's left a nine bar with him. And, and Dickie's going to buy hash for Ferris around a moped. He's now admitted that he perjured his cell and they went over the V in the water to smoke bongs, buckets, right? So <clears throat> where did he get hash? He's left out his nine bar with Joseph Jones and he was going to meet him at six. This is quarter past five. So that was at five or six and nobody ever, right? Um, so all they washed their clothes. Then the police are asking these two men to come forward. And they made it on television. The two men on the moped, please come forward. Ferris is Jody's cousin. Alice Walker, Jody's grandmother, tells her grandson, John Ferris, don't go forward. Ferris tells the police, oh, my grandmother told me not to come forward. And he had to leave Dalkeith. He moved to Ayrshire because Joseph Jones was going to do him. Now, the grandmother and Jodie's mum tell their, their grandson and their nephew, my Joseph's going to do you because he's told the police about his grandmother who's washed all the clothes, by the way, knew where to go and look for the body and they told her grandson not to come forward to the police. Do you think it's a possibility then that somebody in the family's killed Jodie, the grannies knew about it, 
the body's been there, but the granny's trying to cover it up for Luke to yes. get the blame. Yeah. So yeah. for Luke Mitchell, so um, when the search party was there, did they know phone Luke's house to say Jody's missing if you go yes, there? Yes. And he went out with the dog. dog. Oh, so right. the, he went out with the dog, but their statements at the start were all there, yes. but then they changed the statements ah, later ah. on in the stage. So let's talk about the Luke Mitchell side of things. Like, right. what was his daily routine like on that day? What was his day like with before Smoke, smoking hash? Um, listen, he, he got I think four thirty eight, if I remember correctly, four thirty. I may get that wrong, and all my trolls will be on me tonight. You, you're not. Yeah. I think four thirty eight. The last text message. Well, remind me, your phones. Cl cl that's um, to meet her at five. And he's seen sitting at six and he goes out playing with his pals and they say, where's Jody?" And he says, she's no coming. He phones the house and he gets told, Jody, they've left. They. Now that to me is very important. They. I believe he actually left the house that day with her brother. They've left. The stepdad, Alan Owens, told Luke on the phone, they've left. So she no turned up at, I think, quarter to six, 20 to six. And then six o'clock he goes out playing with his pals and he's sitting smoking hash with his pals in the wood. And then... Um, he then says he went home like a half eight at night. I've checked every time, by the way. The police say quarter past five, Jody's murdered. I've looked if he could have done it earlier, James, or later. Do you know what I can be? How? Doesn't matter. Whatever time I looked at, he just couldn't happen. So he says, this is Luke. Luke Mitchell takes his dog out. The only crime I can see, and he is no crime, but Luke Mitchell's the only man that went looking for Jody. See where, see where the path is for Jody's home. 300 yards might be right, 400 yards. The granny and the sister and the sister boyfriend had to walk for another village called Mayfield. I mean, it was a massive scheme in Mayfield, but maybe two miles away to they meet Luke in this path. 300 yards away from where they meet, Jody's stepdad, Alan Owens, and her brother, Joseph Jones, allegedly, he was in that home, I don't believe he was there, but they're allegedly in jo Jody's home 300 yards away, and none of the two men went looking for him. Now, I've got a sister, I've got two sisters. My sister was missing. Yeah, missing. I use that word. Jody was regular out to one in the morning, smoking hash and drinking and all that stuff. So he'd be terribly worried at half past ten at night that your daughter's missing when she's normally she's a rebel. I quite like her. She was in the hash and had different music and she stayed out to one in the morning and stuff. So half ten at night they were all worried that Jody's missing. But two men three hundred yards away never went looking for her. Why? Now the the thing with the search party the search party all tell in the first statements the dog reacts and it puts its ball, ball, uh, paws on the wall and it's sniffing there. Right? And then six statements later, seven weeks later, when they, they, they believe that Mitchell's a killer. Oh no, like Luke Mitchell just walked right to the V and climbed over. The, the, the difference in statements, James, like night and day. But by that time, they believe Mitchell's a killer. And the police are obviously telling them, listen, your statements aren't helping them. And they, they change dramatically. And I think I told you this day, I looked into his dog, right? Donald Finney. He's got a friend, uh, Jane Farkerson, Nigel Bowman solicitor, Jim Kelly solicitor, 10 dogs, Spaniels, Labradors, Terriers, and a dog man turn up at the locust. And they're going to do this experiment to see how a dog would react, right? When they got there, they had nothing for the dogs to react to. So they just went to the pub and had a jolly. That's it's all over the Daily Record, by the way. A solicitor, Jim Kelly, went to the record and told the story about the botched experiment. So I phoned a man called Jock Pride, the regimental sergeant major of the Royal Veterinary Corps, 30 years experience or 25 years experience training Alsatian dogs. I phoned him up and I said to me, could I meet you? He told me to F off. You're a parasitical lawyer. Just a fuck off ass. So I begged him anyway. I meet this man, he was a genius. <laughs> He, he was showing me about scent trails and how dogs react. And, and I says, what's your experience? I was being a wee bit smart. He says, hey, 25 years or 30 years, regimental sergeant major, Royal, Royal Vertico, training Alsatian dogs. I said, what do you mean? He said, I used to take the litter squat and pick the best, the best for um, ammunition and humans, the worst ones for running the fence, no, for protection. And I says, what did you think of me? Exceptional. I say, why would you not call her as a witness? He says, you're the lawyer, you tell me. Luke Never, Mitchell's dog. Luke Mitchell's dog, he called her exceptional. I say, how would she have reacted that night? And he, and he says, she would have put her paws on the wall. And I says, why? Because he says, the scent and the blood from the other side of the wall would grab, grasp the ivy. And it would climb up the trees and the ivy, you know, like it would crawl up. And because the ivy's going over the wall, now you, he says, it would go like that. So the dog would go towards the ivy. Now, everyone, Janine Jennings, Janine Jones, 
Um, Stephen Kelly and Luke Mitchell all describe the dog acting like that. Alice Walker says she couldn't describe it because she was further back. That's a grandmother. Then they all describe Luke Mitchell wide-eyed and terrified. And then with four statements later, he was cool. He never he never showed any emotion. The first police on the scene says he was terrified. His legs nearly gave way. And then yeah, seven, six, seven statements later, Luke Mitchell was very calm, showed no emotion, and walked right to the V and climbed over and walked right to the body. Eh? But you know yourself, you only need two statements to say to make anything stick. Like, how long did it take for Luke to get to jail was it over a year was it oh, near a year oh, wasn't it it was 14 so uh, 18 one yeah so it was a long time so that shows that the lack of evidence was there so how did they end up getting a conviction of look if there was no DNA there was it was only it's only the statements it's only that family statements that's got him done everything is circumstantial but what about the the mob was accused of burning his clothes and oh, oh. what about all that but there was no DNA found in the no, burner on the no. back James see the burner I'm not exaggerating when I tell you the, I think it's 19 inches by 11 mm -hmm. and it's for leaves and twigs right Corey Mitchell I'm just going to say this I'll, I hope I didn't offend her but Corey Mitchell was a bit of a girl right and when I first met her she was a fine looking woman neighbours there's a there's a, adjacent gardens right the neighbours have been in the back bedroom looking at Corey Mitchell sunbathing eh? and eh, the wife's not happy they give you a statement. This is how the statement reads. The tap, the tap, that's how they call a, a woman. A tap in the tight trousers and the knee-high boots was burning something in the garden the other night. There was a strange smell. So they go into the garden the day forensic search and they find nothing. Now, how is that possible? you seen a, a parker coat and a wee fire like that. There's going to be traces over the trees and the bushes and everything. Nothing. Nothing. There was clothes getting burnt on the night of the murder up in a place called Stone Place in Mayfield, getting burnt by John Ferris, one of the boys at the moped at the wall. His mother and half-sister were reported by several witnesses, no one, several witnesses burning clothes, and the police have got the remains of the burnt clothes in, in custody and hid it for the defence. And I'll tell you why we found that out soon. The burnt Parker, then, then we found last week when a policeman, a police person, I didn't want to say man, I'll get the man in any trouble. <laughs> okay. and he, comes to us last week and he tells us the burnt parker they had a search warrant for luke mitchell's school friend in a place called woodburn and they, a search warrant to go and they take his green army parker and they hide it for the defense it's sitting in police productions so the only green parker i can find in this whole case there's no traces of anyone ever been burnt and they listen come on you it's not the easiest thing in the world there's people in jail because there's a bit of dna on a zip you know and they firebombed the car with gallons of petrol Corey Mitchell's got no criminal background, near her look, and they're burning Parkers, and there's no traces of burning the Parkers. And the only other Parker is my number two suspect, Mark Kane. Mark Kane wore a Parker, and everybody says he wore a Parker. Um, there, there isn't a, a green Parker, James. It's, it's an invention because one witness seen a man on New Battle Road wearing a, what, what they think was a long army Parker. They just say Luke Mitchell had a Parker. If it was a shut and closed case, that Luke Mitchell would have been charged within the first week do you know what I mean so it took him over a year to, f to get there must have been so much pressure on the coppers to get somebody and do you think it's a case of getting anybody just to You'll shut see, the case down the Scottish Criminal Case Review Commission and their reports acknowledge that Luke Mitchell was the only suspect in this case for an, an hour in think of that that's a, that's a murder a wee girl and I've made a, wee, a 14 year old boy the one and only suspect they send away all the forensics me personally I think they thought then they worry about this is easy. They've allowed people to do this, they've destroyed the phones, they've allowed people to wash clays, uh, the crime scene's botched, they've missed witnesses, uh, phones, all the Joneses. Joseph Jones has got a phone that belonged to Jody. Jody's got a phone that belongs to Ferris. Ferris has got a phone that belonged to Janine. It's, some have got SIM cards in the package and some have got handsets. Nobody knows whose phones are what. Then they open up data an unsecured room and they lose all the data he phones apart from the ones that they thought could incriminate Mitchell. In other words, they destroyed it. They destroyed all phone data. I say that on record through me, Lovian Borders Police through me. They destroyed every piece of phone record. Then what happens is they wait 15 days on the report coming. You no, know, the forensic report. And the forensic report comes back and it clears Lou Mitchell. And I use that word clear Lou Mitchell because forensics tell you there is no trace for Luke Mitchell to that crime. And I think then, I think the police, oh, what can they do for their own? Um, they bring in a woman, 
called uh, Agnes. I'm not even going to try and pronounce her name, Agnes, whatever, Polish, I think. She's Jodie's auntie, right? And uh, Stephen Kelly's got a full sperm, full DNA profile of sperm. Well, there's a full condom is there, there, by the way. We'll go back to that. It's, it's bizarre. Right, who's bizarre? It? Oh, James Faulkner. Oh, this. Right, so there's a, st a full DNA sperm. So who was the sperm was on George's bra? Is that George's sister's boyfriend? Boyfriend, Stephen Kelly. Were they having... Bell. Something no, between Nobody them? knows that. They're saying they got transferred in a washing machine. And then... then <laughs> but then that's if anybody had DNA or got caught with DNA, they could say it'd been transferred in a washing machine. That's an out for <laughs> any man that's in uh, the jail, the new way. 100%. DNA on them. And, and do you know who gave, gave Stephen Kelly the, 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 the excuse? I'm calling her an excuse. The police... Stephen Kelly says, I don't know how my sperm's on her T-shirt. So the police go and tell him, Jodie must have borrowed your girlfriend's T-shirt. But Janine and Jodie stayed three miles apart. One stays in Mayfield and one stays there. Jodie's got all her own T-shirts, the same kind of T-shirts in her house and all that. But she borrowed her T-shirt, sister's T-shirt that day that had been washed in a washing machine but still had a full, full DNA sperm for Stephen Kelly. Never investigated Never investigated. He had an alibi, and I, I use that word very lightly. Oh, I was with Janine all day at my dad's, and I never investigated. There was a condom. This is how bad the media is, Jim, right? And then, um, oh, seriously, never my head's twisted. 15 metres from where Jodie's found, there's a condom with a full, uh, fresh, full, fully fresh semen, right? Now, Jane Hamilton, I'm, I'm naming her because she's the worst in the Daily Record. The Daily Record say, that's the police never found who owned that condom for three years. Now, come on, anybody with common sense, if you find a wee girl that's naked and tied up, and, right, and then she'd been dressed up, but somebody put her wee socks in that back on, I'll tell you about that now, right? Um, it's a sexual, the, the FBI called it a lust killing. The police says at first somebody who's sexually embarrassed and, and a frenzied killer. So there's a condom fully fresh semen, surely. Common sense tells you, you trace who owns that condom. They never traced him. They, they found him three years later when he got charged with another crime and he got his DNA and it come up in the database. So they went and see him, but they never... Do you know what his excuse is for being there? Now, he's in there at nine at night and Jody's killed at five o'clock and Jody's 15 metres away from him. He says, I went in the woods for a clean wank. Now, I'm... Come on, sir. You're a man at all. Have you ever heard of a man walking in the woods putting on a condom and have a wank? The story is, my investigation is... He was 19 at the time and he was with a 15 year old and he didn't want to tell the police. Years later at his work telling all the lads it was a married woman. But three years they never even tried to trace who the condom was. Now, beside the condom, me and Sandra Lean last year or the year before, we found another hoodie top lying beside the condom. It was never ever DNA tested, just through in a production bag. And they left, never tested DNA, nothing. Nah, the whole thing is just... Uh, but if the, the body wasn't done there, if the, ah. it wasn't killed there either... And then it's been took there. Then it's possible that the condom was just there, about yes, whether yes. it was way some or whether he was having a wank in the woods, like see, see the body. whether he was having a wank or the body. Like you, so, how many people, in your own opinion, do you think was involved in the murder? I think one man killed her. This is only my opinion. I think one man killed her, and two men went to meet their power that day, and they were just too late. And then they, then they got the colour away in a moped and the other one escaped through the woods. And um, and then the, the father, a man called David Dickey, he's a hash dealer. He was a hash dealer, right? He'd be 60 odds now. Maybe 70. I, I interviewed him as a solicitor. He asked me in the field to, to finish the interview. He was um, a hash dealer, but he was also a, a poacher gamekeeper who takes the police up lamb on your whole shoot, right? So he's very close to Dalkey's police. Anyway, the son... David Dickey, Gordon Dickey and John Ferris leave the locus uh, they've just 10 minutes after Jodie's murdered, right? 25 past five or half past five, right? And they drive up the path and they go directly to Dickey's house. Dickey then, Dickey Senior, the father, leaves the house and he walks directly to the body. They all say Luke Mitchell walked directly to the body. This man walked directly to the body diagonally across a ploughed field. Now, anybody else, there's paths everywhere, but he walked direct across a plough field right over the, the way in the wall with nine working spaniel dogs, and he says they never indicated to a body lying 19 metres away. James, I grew up with working dogs. <laughs> that's, that's just not true. A working spaniel clears a field, can find a... 
a bird with a wee bit blood on it, do you know, like, and, and 19 metres away from where he climbs over with nine working spaniels, she says Jody was near there. Now, I've always believed he's a poacher, gamekeeper, whatever that moved the body, and uh, do you know, do you know the, the crime scene being destroyed by bleach as well? Eh? Um, How do you think they moved the body through the motorbikes? No, I think the man that Dicky carried it. Jody's covered in me white hairs, we we believe to be dog here, and I think it come from him. This is this is so. There's bad. been more than one involved. Ah, I believe Ferris Dicky, uh, Joseph Jones, and I believe Dicky Senior. I think they were involved, and I think others in the family knew, but I think they four or the the. The prime four that, the, but it the, doesn't take a genius to kind of work it all out once you've got all the statements no, and no. everybody's background checks like the police would do all that anyway James, but they must have uh, just if they just got it so fucking wrong that they've just targeted that poor boy that's what they've done and that's they've just opinion. tried to get do whatever to get him because all the listen if you've got seven eight nine ten statements going against this one guy he's a weirdo he's, he's fucking has affairs with his mum his mum's a nutcase <laughs> that the mum, because she, was she no charged as well, Corinne, at one point? Oh, they, they charged her and Shane Mitchell, the brother. Shane's disappeared by the way, and they, and they all asked her line, why is the brother not involved? I didn't blame the brother, because they've destroyed, look what they've done to him. The poor mum, Corinne, as well, they smashed oh, all the caravans, they burnt everything down. Yeah. Like, she was living in fucking, basically homeless in a cold shelter. For the last of that, listen, I've not seen her for a few years. She phoned me for time to time, right? And I didn't like getting involved with them, because see, when you get emotionally attached, Jim, you make mistakes. It's yeah. like, so how, for people watching now, how should they believe you or take your opinion as gospel? Ah. Because you are a lawyer and a legal detective. You ah. have been on the case from day one. But for people, other people who ask the questions, like, why should they believe no. what you're saying? I, I haven't no got a motive, James. What's my motive? I've never heard a penny. They, they, they accuse you of lying. Ah, you're lying in your pockets, writing a book. Anybody's ever wrote a book tells you there isn't any money in that. And uh, I, I'll tell you what we're doing with this. I told you this. I've got a man that gave me £10,000 to write that book. No, no, personally gave me £10,000, but put £10,000 in a ring fenced account for anybody, Joseph Jones or Joseph Jones, Gordon Dick, Dickey, John Ferris or D David Dickey, take a lie detector. A polygraph test, I'll, I'll pay for all the expenses, bring Terry Mullins up and we'll do, and the man is willing to pay that. So the first 10000 that comes for that book has to go back to that man. So they accuse you of lying in your pockets. I've not got a motive in this case, James. So Terry Mullins, the, the polygraph expert, Terry Mullins is a good friend of mine now, oh, um, but with the polygraph expert, Luke passed the test and his mum passed the oh. test, like two people to pass that test, like I say, millions to one, that like, they're not fucking SES agents, they're not trained soldiers where they can fake these tests, like when they two passed the test, when I start, I didn't know they passed the test, so when I looked into it, I realised, wait a minute, is that possible that... This kid can be innocent. A 14-year-old boy oh. who served life in prison who could get out if he admitted his guilt, which he still doesn't, which takes a lot of bottle as well. But when they passed the, the, pol the polygraph test, like how was the uproar then when both passed? Oh, oh well, people say, listen, I was, his, I was his lawyer at the time. I'm not, that's a boss, by the way. And um, it was the first time ever I'd done in Scotland. We'd done looking at his mum and, and we'd done a, a, a female prisoner, Carla and I go. And, um, but no with Terry Mullins. It was done with somebody else and it was not Terry Mullins is the best. He's the my, best in Britain. In my, in my opinion, yeah, yeah, yeah. the best. And, and I've done work with Terry other, other, outside of that and he's a man of integrity. You could have got to Terry Mullins and, and buy him. Ah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's worked for the biggest names ah, in, he's, in he's spot, all right? over Europe. And um, the last time I seen Luke Mitchell was in Shorts Prison. And uh, I, I can see his name now. He's dead, Martin Hamilton. Do you, do you remember me, Hammy for Mary Hill? Mm -hmm. He was sitting in the next booth. The, the gay guy? Ah, yeah. I've been the cop gay ah, man. Ah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Right, so when you're going to visit prisoners in shots, it's glass containers, it's glass partitions. So I'm sitting here with, with, with Luke and, and Hammy's in his neck. Right, so when he'd done the lie detector test, Terry told them to close his eyes because prison officers and, and other prisoners were looking in. So that was, oh, he closed his eyes. <laughs> and uh, Luke Mitchell's telling the truth, James. Uh, listen, see, I've worked on many cases, right? And uh, and I tell people, listen, I'll shake your hand, but if you lie to me once, and I find out you've lied to me, I, 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 I've walked away for cases before. Be part of the whole, you know, miscarriage of justice. And I've done work for him and walked away for a case before. And I knew the man was still innocent, but he had lied to me. Do you know, he, he had led me up a garden path about his alibi, and it was just nonsense. So I walk away. And all the time I've worked in this case, and genuinely I've worked on it, 
I've not looked at the case papers for a long time. Me and Sandra, a couple of years ago, right, and this, we went through the crime scene photographs again, right? There's only true evidence that, that's in this case. The rest of it is uh, the police. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, James, honestly, the lies. But the FBI, they flew to America. This, this, could this sum up probably the whole case? They fly to America. Doby and, uh, and a guy, Walker, I think, if I remember his name right, the two senior detectives, they, we've done freedom of information requests, right? How much did this cost? Two senior detectives fly to America. The FBI quoted us 30 grand, 30,000 they wanted us to pay and a retainer to get a new report done. So they must have spent 100 grand maybe flying to America, getting an FBI report done on the killing of Jody Jones. And uh, you can't read it. <laughs> it's just didactic. Took a black felt tip pen and destroyed the whole thing. What we do know is he says it was near Luke Mitchell. He says it's too young. It was a lost, a lost killing, they called it. Um, was it Lassie raped her then? No, nah, no. Nah, but she was stripped naked. Here's, here, the, the, the media told you about the condom. It wasn't a sexual crime and that. Of course it's a sexual crime. Now listen, she's stripped naked. Her hands are tied round her back, right? And uh, we are trousers. And her trousers are soaked in blood, we believe, I think, for the wound here. James, somebody went back and dressed out of you, Lassie. Jody, the MO, so, sorry for digressing, but when you start, right, Jody was dragged about with the hair and punched and kicked, first and foremost, right? She's then strangled, rendered unconscious, and then somebody butchered her. And I use that word no lightly, right? Joseph Jones' MO was dragging his sisters, both his sisters, with the hair and buns, punching them. And all his statements for the family members are all telling you he ragdolled her or he swung her about with the hair. Well, Jody was swung about with the hair. So it's all... That doesn't mean to say he definitely killed her. That's only my opinion. Right. But it was something that should have been looked at. But the guy who talks of the animals and that as well. Oh, that, listen, I, Mark Cain. There's something, and they were all pals. Ah, oh, well, listen, they were all hash smokers and we're all in the same place, isn't it? And what about the confession? Did somebody know walk into the cop shop yeah. and give a confession? Allegedly, right? This is, I never put that in my book and people ask me that. Allegedly, Joseph Jones walked into Dalkey Police Station and he uh, gave a confession about how he killed Jody. But because he was uh, psychotic at the time, they never took it serious. But if Joseph Jones walked in there morning straight and gave that confession, it would chase him, James. The, the, the case is closed. <laughs> they, they, you hear me? Why have they never gave a retrial? Yeah. That's something that was worth trying. Um, you would have to find new evidence. And here's a, here's a, there's a test for new fresh evidence, right? And the legal test is it was not available to the defence at the time of trial, right? Now, when we found the medical records, oh, that to me, it's a smoking gun. When you read these medical records, I'll, say, I'll show you after this. I'll show you. Um, his violence and all, and what, what the medical records are saying about But what somebody in the medical team, and the only reason I can say this or I believe this, Luke Mitchell's lawyers never requested them. When you're a lawyer and you want to see medical records, you, you write to the, the medical board or government and you, and you say, I want James English's medical records, and, you, and if they didn't get them, you can fight and you end up getting them. Nobody wrote the letters, right? Or they're certainly not in the files. But somebody sent medical records to Luke Mitchell's lawyers. Now, the reason we know that is because they're in the photocopies, they're originals. Now, who's got access to original me I think somebody in that medical team have realised wait a minute here you just have to really know about this and what Luke Mitchell's lawyer did is opened up the envelope seen whose medical records are put them back in the envelope without reading them and put, threw them away and put them away at the bottom of the, the, the box and it's like 10 years later we're reading medical records what's that it's Joseph medical records <laughs> and you start reading in further and you think what but you can't then go back and see this is fresh evidence because they were available at the time of the trial. Mm -hmm. The only thing is... But somebody must have stopped that evidence for appearing. Like, who would oh, do that? Luke Mitchell's lawyers. Why? I don't know. My laziness. Because Lazy. but Turnbull was on for the... Turnbull was a, the, de the deputy, advocate deputy. And, and, and he's Donald one Finley. of the top boys in Scotland. Oh, he's, a, he, he's, he's a, ruthless oh, with sentencing. Oh, 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 he's, he was ruthless as a... Listen, I'll, I'll just say this on record because I haven't had to lose anymore. Lady Scott, Maggie Scott, QC. Now, Lady Scott was Luke Mitchell's QC at the time. The last time we put in an application to the Scots Criminal Case Review Commission. By the way, they tell you the people are independent, James. That's not true. They're the Crown. And, uh, and I'll tell you why, you now, right? Um, 
She wanted to overturn every conviction that Tumble ever had because she disagreed with his, his methods, right? Luke Mitchell now McGrackey are two of his most famous. They are the worst two missed carriers of justice in Scottish legal history. Yeah. Joe Steele and Tommy Campbell are up there, but Lockerbie's the biggest and Luke Mitchell's a wee 14-year-old boy, which makes it probably the worst. Um, she wanted to overturn both their convictions. She was a lawyer for Luke and for Al McGrackey. She's now Lady Scott. Once you're Lady Scott, you can, thereafter can't get involved and try to overturn convictions. Mm -hmm. Whether that's all people, oh, conspiracy, you know, conspiracy is just fact. Eh? But 10, 10, 12 weeks ago, I got a phone call to a police person come and, come and have a look, Scott. And then he tells us, Channel 5 aired that programme. Um, the first thing they done, started destroying all the evidence. I said, what? Nah, you've been serious. And he said, nah, deadly. Um, serious crime squad based in Livingston. Um, got all the productions signed off for the Crown. Coincidentally, uh, the Lord Advocate's married to, to Alan Tumble. <laughs> She's, the Crown signed off all the productions and all the evidence in the Luke Mitchell trial. And uh, the serious crime squad for Livingston drive the fetties and picked them up in a van and started destroying them. So we now have a, a, a QC, Roddy Dunlop. It's the first time I've told anybody's name. Roddy Dunlop was willing to represent Luke Mitchell pro bono if we couldn't get legal aid. We got legal aid. And he writes to the Crown and he asks them, is this true? Have you been destroying evidence? And they say, yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> only, only, the, only the police. Oh, the Crown are admitting that they've given it to the police to destroy. And in the last paragraph, roughly word for word, they say, please don't give us a guarantee that you'll not raise litigation against us. Imagine it was all a cover-up. Imagine the coppers did know for the start. Instead of it being a fuck-up, imagine they just try to cover it up. But again, if this is one of the biggest miscarriages of justice in Scotland, imagine how many others have been fucking through in jail. Because I've interviewed many of them. It's people who served 20 odd years for crimes they didn't commit. This shit goes on relentlessly. And not all coppers are bad. There's, there's, it's like anything. There's, there's good and bad. And there's some decent coppers that like I've interviewed a few. And they're, they're sound, man. Like, but there's some fucking ruthless bastards who would do anything to try and get top of the ladder. When, and whether that's throwing a 14 year old under the bus is a do, different story. Do you know Craig Dobie retired after, right? Craig Dobie was a. Um, a drug squad officer in Leaf in, in the city first, right? Dal keeps a different ballgame. Sounds like a fucking zoo. <laughs> that's a group that, that's rough. No disrespect to yeah, anybody. Yeah, 100%. Like, Listen, um, sound wild. Th there's jokes. There's jokes here that like, you have to be married to your cousin to you get a house here and all, right? And uh, the, the, the guy, John Ferris, one of the moped boys, that's what they call him, eh, the moped boys at the V. Um, he's allegedly got a daughter, got a daughter to his half sister. And on the night of the murder, his half sister and his mother are burning clothes. Oh, right. So the policeman, sorry for digress. That's what the right. policeman comes to me all these weeks ago and he tells us about the destruction of evidence. So we write to the crown. The crown come back and say, yes, definitely, the police have been doing that and, and they'll stop. So now we've asked, what have you destroyed and what have you got left? Now, scrapings for under no, underneath Jody's nails. We think they're destroyed, but they were there, they've been hidden for us, right? A green Parker coat taken under a search warrant, hidden for the defence. Craig Dobie told the High Court uh, there was no search warrants apart from Mitchell and, the, and his family. That, that in itself tells you something. They never searched anybody's houses apart from Luke, his dad's and his mum's business, but that's a lie. They, they went to Luke Mitchell's pal and took a green Parker. <laughs> oh, it gets worse. Jody's psychological reports. Nobody had ever seen them or ever heard them, but police have brought them in productions, but hid them. And the, and, and, the, and the man's telling me different stories, you know. And uh, he says, I'm just for you, Scott. I said, I was. When I took Mark Kane to the police, James, at the time, two, 2003, this is 20 years ago, I was a different man. I, I'd been in prison and all that, served five years, and, you know, and then talking to the police was something my pal still didn't agree with. You know, irrespective if it's a wee girl or no, right? I, I took, I done what I done, and I'm I'm all right with it. Um, when I took Mark Kane to the police, I had discussions with Mark Kane, and I said to Mark, "Fuck, it looks bad." And he says, "You know, what's?" I said, "What?" I wrote essays. I said, "What do you mean you wrote essays, Mark?" He said, "I wrote essays about calling a woman in the woods." I said, "What oh, for? Fuck, this is me and him walking." And I says, are you having a laugh? And he says, no, Scott, I wrote an essay about coming a woman in the woods. This is looking bad. The boy couldn't remember where he was when he did the murder. He's got scratches. He's fully valium, methadone, speed, lager, 
and smoking hash. And, and he's, he's generally a weird boy, yeah, quite, quite fond of him. He's a very intelligent lad as well, but he was weird. And, um, and he's telling me about his essays. Oh, I think, what? The police go into the appeal court and they tell the appeal court, no such essays exist. Forbes is a liar. I'm like, what? The copper says to me, 10 weeks ago, there's your essays here, pal. Uh, 20 years later. But can, you get, but can you get easy discredited because you've been in the jail? Aye, aye, okay. listen, do you know what it says? Me and him are going to, I, I tell him to play along, we were going to get 50 grand. You Can you get 50 quid for the for story, right? He gave a statement saying, that nah, has never been says, James. There's no money ever been mentioned. i never done nothing, day nothing for money. Anybody that knows me tells you, when I was young, I was rash, but never for money. I'm not saying I never got money, <laughs> but never the, the, the thing, right? So they discredited me, aye, he's an ex-con and he's this and he's that. And the essays don't exist. Ah, well, 10 weeks ago, these, these essays have been missing since 2005, no? There, there's a man showing me the two essays. And, and the name of them is called No Remorse. And it's about a junkie killing a woman in the woods. Hidden for the, hidden for the defence. Hidden for the defence. But it's still hard to pinpoint why they would, all that shit would be hidden. Like, what's the purpose of it? To, I, ju to... I just think they made that much of a mess. That's that. Listen, now there's a lot of people, there's... People. What was what was a, what did they have against Luke to get a conviction? Because you must have something purely circumstantial. Um, he's weird, um, missing knives. He had a fascination for knives, James. And um, and I've made a mistake. Listen, I was going to bring it today for you. Luke Mitchell had a, a what they called a missing knife. That's another thing that the policeman showed me. There's no missing knife. Got there, it's there. They took swabs off it. Yeah, uh, oh, there's another missing knife found in a a skip. Oh, there's that much. A man phoned me when I'm writing that book. He says, eh, Scott, are you ever aware of a big bowie knife that was found? I said, no, where, where? And then, um, where Jody's murdered half a mile away probably, there's garages, James, right? But you could drive up and down this road and you would never know these garages existed unless you knew they were there, right? The man, anyway, they're, they're, in a, they're all them farm workshops, spray shops, mechanics, and they were all in the stock car racing. Joseph Jones, Ferris, uh, Luke Mitchell's brother, a whole lot of them used these garages. This mechanic finds a, a bowie knife inside the skip with the tip missing. He sees a couple of... And he, anyway, I didn't put it in the book because I couldn't get corroborated. But he, he describes the bowie knife brilliant to me. A very, quite a similar description to what people told me Joseph carried in his back, backpack. That might be a different... There's hundreds of bowie knives, right? But then... Um, so I couldn't get corroboration. I phoned up a man and the man says to me, no, no, Scott, it wasn't a big bowie knife. It was a stupid wee yelly handle thing. I says, what do you mean? He said, well, my son, 14, found it with him. And the cops picked the 14-year-old the laddie up for school, drive him home, but tell him in the car, that knife he found, son. Nah, it's just a cheap thing. A mechanic took, took a window out of a car and broke it and just threw it away. So that the boy just forgot about the knife. And then all years later, he gets a phone call from me. And he said, nah, listen, that's not true. It was just a cheap thing. So I go back to the mechanic and I said, nah, your pal that found the knife, he's telling me it's a cheap thing. His words to me was, didn't he talk shite? He says, eh, I'm a mechanic, has got no tools. He said, was that good? I Googled it in 2003 and it was over £100. I'm thinking, but what do I do with this? Anyway, about 10, 6, 7, 8 weeks ago, I went this goes to John Salins, you know the policemen that were in Channel 5? They went to him and they went on tape. They found a bowie, he, so we've got corroborated witnesses on tape, found a large bowie knife in the skip, covered in blood. There's a man seen running away, John Ferris, I believe it was, running towards his garages. Jo Joseph Jones used the garages, Ferris used the garages, and the knife's in police custody and they took swabs for it, but they never tested it. And they only found this out 10 weeks ago. A policeman with a conscience. Shall we say, a police person with a conscience. Scott, you want to come and have a look at this, son? Do you think that was a murder weapon? I think, uh, or if no, it's something like that. It's just mad to, to try and piece it all together. Like oh. I say, it looks innocent. Like, I'm not a detective, but with the information I've got, and all, even the stuff that I can't speak online now because I don't want to jeopardise any retrial mm. in any case, but the, the boy's innocent. A 14-year-old boy was convicted of murdering a 14-year-old boy's mother's life was turned upside down. His brothers went fucked off, and rightly so. The pressure they must have <coughs> under. His poor mom was terrorised. All her caravans burnt down. The poor woman was living homeless. James, like, the brother leaves the house one day. Sorry, Pa. That's listen, all right. And then there's that much. Listen, see, when you start on this, he, the brother leaves the home one day, right? He's 19. I think at the time, 19, 20. He's never been in trouble before, right? 
He's not, he's not a shy boy. He's, he's into his bikes and his car and his stock. He's like, oh boy, I know I'm not 20 year old. He leaves at home one day and he sees a police, like, blockade. No, he thinks it's for insurance or tax. You know how they set up roadblocks? It's for him. He's driving his work to mind his own business, dragged out the car, handcuffed in in the police station. Fucking. The, the interviews were that bad against Luke Mitchell and his brother. The high court, the high court says we're interrogations. A 14 year old boy who was interrogated, but they allowed it. Then, then they says to Luke, uh, Shane Mitchell, they made him um, pervert in the course of justice and then dropped the charges, which is not a normal procedure at court. And the High Court Judge Nemo Smith says to him, he allowed the questioning because he was not a suspect. See, if he had kept the charges, pervert in the course of justice, the questioning would have been inadmissible. But because he dropped the charges, they allowed his questioning. And the question is, how many fucking wanks did you have? Hey, would you watch porn when your brother's in the house? No. So yes and no answers. Then it, his alibi, Luke Mitchell's alibi was... But what was Luke Mitchell's alibi? None. Yeah. Listen, it was that nonchalant that, uh, come on, anybody that knows crime, if you do something wrong, you've got an alibi or you've got something in your mind. The brother said he came home from work, he didn't, he, he, when the first, his first statement, I always go with the first statement. Me personally, listen, I remember, I can't even remember the name of it, but they reckon once you go in, it's five and six statements, it all gets changed after time, you get influenced and all. Always read the first statement. See, Mitchell's first statement is when he come in, came home from work, he wasn't sure if Luke was in the house. Luke says he's in the kitchen and his brother was upstairs and he was cooking for his mum and all that. No. Yeah, it was just it was a silly alibi. Why are you know? allowed to change statements? Oh, well, that's a good question, James, isn't it? That's a good question. And uh, listen, Jody Jones, he's granny, I'll say this on record. I've said that a few times, I've never held back. Jody Jones, gra John, Jody Jones grandmother should have been charged with perverting the course of justice. She threatened Crown Winters, i.e. her grandson. She, she washed clothes, right? Uh, Judith Jones, Jodie's mum. I wouldn't have charged her because of the nature, right? And um, her alibi and that, James, for her son. Oh, Jesus. Listen. Oh. Um, listen. She, her statement first reads, she owned large vodkas. I'm no slagging her. People say you're slagging I'm just telling, just telling her how it is. She's owned large vodkas for 12 o'clock that day, right? Jodie's found she 11 at night. So, but 12, 11 hours, you're on the pussy. And then four or five days later, people mentioned the stocky man. Oh, oh, she's seen the, the memory is uh, incredible. Oh, for somebody being on a drink, she could tell how, how long she'd been cooking pasta and it wasn't ready, so we had to get another two minutes. They never even cooked pasta that day. They got a chip he delivered, I know that through my own investigation. And uh, Joseph was upstairs and never left the house. Nobody seen Joseph Jones all day. Nobody seen him. He was upstairs in a bedroom lying sleeping. And the mum says, I knew he was there because I could hear him, but he's saying I've been smoking that many bucket bongs I was lying sleeping. Oh, the whole thing, James, honestly. The whole thing, I, I, I didn't I laugh sometimes because the whole thing. We Luke Mitchell didn't call that wee girl. What about the the Jones family? Like, like I said, there's still an innocent girl being killed. Oh. What about if they ever... I'm, like, I don't want it all to be one-sided, but people Go always on. say, oh, it seems one-sided, but... It's been all one-sided against Luke 100%. for over nearly, for nearly 20 yes, years. This is only yes, this time yes. this boy's had a yes, voice. Yes. Like, so it's not really been one-sided, but I've had yourself now as the fourth part of the Luke Mitchell uh, case. But I'm happy to have somebody for the Jones side to come on and, and have their say. But nobody's ever came forward. Nobody, no, I've no. never heard them get an interview. I've never heard anybody back it. Listen, maybe they just want to put it to, be, to course, bed and forget course, about course. it. But there's so much unanswered questions. Well, James, there's two things here. Just when the family, see, see the night they found the body, they're walking up the path. Janine Jones, Jodie's sister, says to her boyfriend, was she naked? Why would you ask that question? She didn't know how Jodie had been killed. Jodie could have fell for a tree and banged her head. She could have hung herself with suicides in the family. Was she naked? That's always sort of troubled me, do you know, right? The second thing is, what you're saying is spot on. They want to dignify silence, but that's not true. The, the family spokesperson, shall we call her, right? Agnes, with the Polish surname. She's been bullying and harassing people for 20 years. See anybody that speaks out? Agnes goes to the papers along with her pal Jane Hamilton and bully them. So, so why does she not come and speak? She's been very vocal over 20 years. Not that long ago, she was a, a, a Tory councillor, I think, for Stirling or Falkirk. she done, she sent a tweet or something. Um, I support this case as a miscarriage of justice. Next thing, Daily Record, Jane Hamilton, along with us that. Aunt Jodie's auntie, very vocal, you won't need right seeing that and all this. And the woman had to retract her statement. So if, if they're vocal, it 
attacking people. Why not be vocal? Come and sit here with you or anybody else. Yeah, yeah put, do, I'll do, put all the answer that I'm you're saying in the last three podcasts. Put it to bed. Have your say. I'm I'm not just all one sided, but with the information I have, I've still got to give the boy a voice because it's all been for nearly twenty years all against them. The weird though, the the, the the weird music taste, the, the drinking his own pee, the, the kissing his mama and all that mad shit like I don't have all the answers, but what you have got is the, the proof to say there was no evidence against the boy to get a conviction of the killing of Jody Jones. J James, I'm for that area. Dal Keith, I'm born there. My dad's a, a striking coal miner, right? And uh, I know how quick, quick gossip, come on, is it like a scheme? Mm. You tell somebody, right? Now, folks, you are you're now involved in somebody. Listen, there's a policeman. Now, I'm going to need, do, you, do you ever see the Sky interview with Luke Mitchell and his mum? He's playing, she's playing with his ear. Ah, yeah. and, and then and uh, Ian Stevens, who I worked with in the miscarriage, he just is coming in, oh, listen, he's uh, having sexual relationship. He did look unnatural. And then, then he says, when he found out about Mark Cain, the, the number sus, two sus, oh, he'd have been a person of interest. We'll see that interview. When I watched that, I've always been in the opinion that James Matthews was asking Luke Mitchell questions that only the police could ask him under caution. No, you've got a right to remain silent. And you saying all that, right? And uh, for years, I, knew, I always says he was briefed. He'd been coached by the police. Again, just recently, a man phones me, a local councillor touched me, he just died the other day, Alec Bennett, God rest his soul. He says to me, he always told Luke he was guilty. So he says, I'm reading your books, son. He says, fair play. <laughs> They're all laughing. You can, at long last, you can read and write and all that, right? He says, I'm reading that bit about James Matthews. Do you not know James Matthews, Scott? And I said, no, I know he's a Sky reporter. No, son, he's for the village. I said, the village, down the hall, right? And he says, his brother's a local copper. Brian Matthews, a local, the community policeman in Dal Keith in 2003 who's telling all the boxing clubs, all the football clubs, all the minors clubs, we've got the wee cut. We can't tell you how, but we've got the wee man. His brother's now in, in Luke Mitchell's house in there, you know? Now, I know that's all conspiracy, but somebody set him up. And uh, Dal Keith in 2003, James, you couldn't find anybody who believed that Luke Mitchell was innocent, Paul. Because they, they rumour mill and, and listen, it's, see Dal Keith, it's like 10 mining villages. Or, Nebdy right? thought he was innocent. Nebdy, Paul. Let's be honest. Listen, like, I, Nebdy thought that. Even the guy I like, didn't think, oh, when Joe Steele said it to me, I thought, fuck no. sake, Joe, you're crazy, but... And then you wait, you, you wait up and go, wait a minute, Joe Steele wouldn't say that without some credibility. And then you look into it and he was right. But like I say, I'm not a detective, but with information that I have, that boy is, there's nothing to point him at being you there on that night or, can, or killing that see, young you, girl. See, the mirror, I'll, I'll tell and you. And it's you, mad to think. It's 14, fucking mad. 14. And yes. like you say, there's an innocent lassie being killed. God rest her oh, soul, awesome. do you know what I mean? But in that family, like we, we don't have everything here to say right it was this person that person we can only give our, our own opinion you've came here today oh. and just been blatantly open and honest which is I think could, is only the right thing as well today James my mo see my motivation is my very first day was Joe, the wee last year murdered day. everybody in that area wants to help you I mean it's no a bank robbery or somebody gets shot or whatever it's a wee last year, I've got my daughter's the same age 14 I went to my dad by the way see when I wanted to start talking to you I went to my dad and abused her and asked him and he's he knows me, eh? And, he, and I said, Dad, I'm not listening, but... And he said, shout louder, sir. And I went, my wee lassie, my wee lassie, because she's 32 now. And then, um, 14, the same age as Jodie, in the same kind of schools. I've got my grandson in the same school now as where Jodie and I went, eh? And then, um, I went to my daughter, and my daughter told me, Dad, shout. Shout. And uh, listen, my only motivation for the day one was Jodie Jones, right? I've never made a penny for this case. I read in line of like my pocket, I'm not rich man anyway. And they have read in line of it. Nah, it's cost me fortunes. I never know, like traveling back and forward here, there, and every I've been in Dalkey for a thousand times for where I stayed to meet people and this. I never earned a penny, but even as when I was his lawyer. By the time we were his lawyers, the legal aid had been oh, well, spent ten times by lawyers milking, milking it, right? And they. Uh, my motivation for day one was to be Jodie Jones. Still remains that, although, listen, the family hate me, and rightly so, I didn't blame them. And I, I don't blame um, the Jones family for pointing their finger at me and calling me up, whatever. I didn't mind that, because what I'm saying is, if, if they were saying that about me, but I can't uh, shut up for what I've seen. And uh, this is just, uh, I've not just read, read crime files. I've been in Dalkeith 16 years, people telling me things. 
like the guy Dickie recently, Dickie's now admitting that he perjured himself and laughing about it and how he was over the wall. People are slipping. People are making mistakes now, Jim. But it's already making mistakes. It's getting that mistake back into court, Paul. Do you think the truth will ever come out? Yes, yes, yes. And I'm looking, aye, I believe so, I believe so. And I, and I think it's, uh, oh, can I? The media convicted Luke Mitchell, in my opinion, right? Mm -hmm. The police manipulated them, the media, right? Fair play, listen, that's their job and whatever, right? And, and I get bitter towards them. And, but it's, you understand it, but the media's turning. I've got a couple of D real good journalists, a guy, Doogie Walker and his son, I gave him a mention, and, and the only reason I gave him a mention is he's been brave. Um, we've got a couple in the Express and, and, and the Mail, the Daily Record, I've never turned because they went against Mitchell. I'm trying with that as well, right? Uh, I've asked an editor now, Jane Hamilton's retired for the, or took redundancy for the record. Right? We're trying with the record, look, please come and speak to us, take a walk, you know, if, if you ever then we're coming, I'll take you a walk and I'll show you. And when you leave, you, I've never taken anybody that walk, James, and, and I've left to believe in Luke Mitchell called Jody. Because when you show them in, you think, mm -hmm. right? So, the Sun, front page headlines, did you see it? Luke Mitchell. Just burnt. a couple of weeks ago. Oh, brilliant. Right, so I have to applaud Doogie for that, right? He'd be brave. Most other journalists, oh, Luke Mitchell. He come forward and says, okay, I'll do that. So the, if, if we can turn the daily record in the Sun, Oh, we're halfway there. That's my opinion. Just shows you how how powerful the media is, though. Ah, oh, definitely. Do you know what I mean? Ah, hundred percent. Look, what's your whole rundown on it, Scott? For day one to now, um, I think. Uh, uh, oh, the, the, the murder's horrific, James. Right? It's not a serial killer, and and it's not a, a cold hearted or um, caught calculated. It's a a frenzy thing, right? The wee socks. Just quickly, Jody Jones is dragged about with hair, right? And then uh, she dragged her along the ground. And then the reason we know this, she's got mud on on in her socks, right? And her socks have come off. And somebody's put the socks back on, but they put them on inside out. So the mud's in the inside of the socks. So we know the socks have come off and somebody put them back on. Who dressed them again? Somebody would care. If I psychologist this, who would do this? Somebody that cared for her would do it. She'd been lying naked and somebody's picked up the socks and put them back on, right? That was never investigated in there. Me personally, I think the police made that much of a hash it. Um, they destroyed the crime scene. The, the, the whole crime scene is uh, botched, for, for want of a better word. They allowed witnesses to wash their clothes. The witnesses did disappear. They got lazy, they got arrogant. We've got our man, and when they come back, no forensic links to Luke Mitchell. I think they just kept targeting them. I think they invented stuff and bullied people. Listen, I've got young kids, 14 or 15, at the time, try to stick up for looking over bullied, you no know, intimidated by police. You're yeah, fucking, <laughs> and uh, some some now who spoke against Luke are now having a uh, counselling because they believe Luke Mitchell killed her. Everybody in 2003 believed Mitch, even his wee school pals, 14 year old lassies, you no know, like saying he's a fucking animal and we don't like him and and they say things against him. They're now grown grown women, you no know, with their own minds and they're sitting in the house at night crying, thinking, what did I do to my friend? because they were intimidated and bullied by the police. Everybody that spoke out, everybody I've spoken to in, the, in all these years, anybody that spoke out or anybody that come forward with any evidence that was not fitting the police narrative were either ignored, bullied or smeared. And um, I just think um, people say they were crooked. I just think um, after the forensics cleared, look, I think they just targeted them, James. Well, that was one of the first for many years to come forward and shed light on it and say it was innocent and it was 90% hate it was 90% people try to cancel me people try to stop me and now it's 90% it? for it cancelled you're going to get a phone call but I'm not even going to mention your name because I know that you've had a tough there's an art podcaster down south mm -hmm. hey, child me like in uh, eye, you know right he interviewed me and then uh, I thought it was alright it wasn't him that done it he's psychic and all that no I've done a few now I never planned to mm -hmm. do this and uh, when I wrote that, I thought, oh, I've never been in the limelight. I'm no camera in that. But now I'm getting used to it. I feel mm. right, very right. Yeah. Jane Hamilton cancelled me for that, no? Phoned them up. And, and, and uh, uh, what was these words? Um, she reached out to me and withdrew it offline. But other people just stuck on other, other places. Mm. Yeah? So they've tried to cancel me for 15 years, Paul. They've smeared me. They've, uh, and, and I still get threats. Do you know, like... Uh, you have to be careful, Scott. You know, like what happens if your door goes in one morning and you find someone in the... Listen, if that happens, you so what, James? I'm not bothered. It can happen I mean, to anybody. Of course. 
But if there's an innocent kid there and there's fresh information and there's more stuff coming out, then you've got to do the right thing. You've got to do what your soul ah, tells James, you. James, that's so the right I mean, thing. Fuck everybody ah, else. Ah, well, but I'm happy to sit with close ah. for anybody. I'll shy away from nobody. I'll ah, happy listen. to sit for it. And this is just the, like you say, information. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a detective. You're a lawyer. You're a le legal detective. Do you know, like, listen, that's a big question. How are you knowing the law society anyway? Mm -hmm. See, so all your cancelling culture. Mm -hmm. Hey, you never became a solicitor. You never went to university. Um, oh, listen, just, you get all um, Paddy Hill, miscarriage of justice. When I leave for the day, I think I'm going to go pop in and see him. I'll take you and introduce you in that right for there. They call me their best investigator I've ever had. Night, uh, tramping about a uh, drum chapel at night with my briefcase, you know, like in the, a case, a terrible case and all that, right? And then um, a case that um, Tommy Campbell brought to us many years ago. A guy was in shorts painted the cell green on New Year's Day or Paddy's Day or something. And Tommy Campbell got in touch and says, This man is innocent, you know, would you look at? And I looked at the case, two cases for them. And uh, I'm decent, what a day, James. I'm, I'm fair street, I'm no hiding, I've done a five, uh, I was in list D school at 13 and all that, eh? and first time I was in Peel Glen and at 14, right, so I'm not a daft, I'm not a fool, you know, and eh, seven years at uni, four years post-grad law, and I'm not a, eh, I'd, I'd, I'd probably look at things a wee bit different for other lawyers, not, which is all right, okay. And, street um, wise? Ah, yeah, well, I'm still, What is your qualification, Scott, well, for my, people my, watching? Ah, uh, my qualification, I've got a, a Bachelor's Honours degree in Philosophy and History, and I've got an LLB that I've done in postgrad, and I've got a legal practice diploma in postgrad as well. Four year postgrad law and a four year un undergrad mm -hmm. with history and philosophy. Do you think Luke Mitchell will ever get out? Uh, do you know what I think? Hope I'm wrong, James, but here's what I think is going to happen. I think the police have destroyed that much evidence, right? And when the Crown come back, we're wait waiting on this now. The Crown will come back and they're going to tell us what they've destroyed. And I think when they tell us what they've destroyed, it'll breach his Article 6, his right to an appeal. So they'll allow him out on that ground. And that way it saved them from investigating that there is no crime. That's what I think is going to happen. Do you think you'll ever admit he's guilty to just try and get out? No, or do you think no, no, too no, far? no, 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 mm no. -hmm. Listen, I've heard, listen, I hear, listen, I read a statement earlier, you know, like in the, when he was in poem and me shot and he's super me pissed and he's super that. Okay, I've seen all that. Imagine even going on record when you're a grown man talking like that, but okay. I got told um, he confessed when he was in the digger in Pullman, right? And uh, the people that I heard were there, okay, you would confess, because if you didn't confess, you were getting sliced. Eh? So I heard all this and I heard it for years, and and, and, and I've mentioned it as people spoke to me. I've heard, oh, oh, I've heard this in Pullman that he'd done this and he'd done this. I went to men that we both know that were in Pullman and told me, that's nonsense, I never heard that. And uh, they thought he was a beast. But other people tell me, um, oh, Scott, I was in here and we gave him a hard time, but some of the people who gave him a hard time in Pullman now are very supportive. And that, they're laddies for that area. They've done five and sixes when they were young laddies in Pullman. They're now very, very supportive. You can Mitchell. see why he get terrorised, because oh, if I was in the jail and he was there, you're going to terrorise him because you think it's true. By the way, James, you know you boy. No, I know. Oh, he's not yeah. And the big, see the laddie Jordan that done the mm -hmm. pod? He was in... And they tell me, oh, Scott, he fought back. But you can understand oh, why people were terrorising him. Definitely. Like I say, when Joe said to me, I thought, nah, you can't be. Like, I was, in my mind, he was always guilty. It was all over the papers and news, especially with being so close to home. Like, you don't forget these things. Like, how do you, when you wrote the book, like, how, has this been fact checked? Has this been ah, checked? Yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, I'll just tell you right off. There's one thing in there that's... That, that Where can people, people get it, Scott? Amazon. 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 Mm -hmm. Ah. Um, listen, I fact check. I mean, Sandra, Sandra Lean's encyclopedia, Luke Mitchell. Mm -hmm. <coughs> listen, I've worked with Sandra too. So everything's above board, it's all fact oh, check. Oh, no, ever, everything. Um, the, the, <coughs> there's two, two things in there that make me laugh, can I show you? Of course. The Bible, I'm not a biblical person, mm -hmm. eh? But there's a... Uh, the time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed. And all that is secret will be made known to all. Luke 22, <laughs> right? And a wee verse for Burns at the back. The only person that's scared of the truth is Amy. When, right. There's one thing in here they keep pulling me for, James. We, Jody Jones, when she, Jody's dad committed suicide when he was 15, right? When, uh, when she was nine and then the brother was 15. They say that's when the brother went off the rails. And uh, in statements, and I'm not going to say who's because I have to cover myself here because... 
um, in statements, the mother included, but other people's statements. We Jody walked in in a, in, in a bad party, a swingers party one night and grabbed a bottle of vodka and run out the house, run out the living room, and it caused scenes in the house and that led to the, the father's suicide. People are saying, did not he talk shite? Jody was in the, wasn't he in the country, the grandmother had the way. That's not true. I, I've based everything on here on factual evidence. Evid so if I've told a lie or people say I'm a told a lie in there, it's because somebody's told a lie in their statements. And everything I've read in there comes from Ori Jones' family statements, uh, Luke's statements, Luke's mother's statements, Luke's brother's statements, and police statements. Everything that's in there is uh, factual. Factual. Now, they got checked and peer checked. Sandalene is my, my reference. If I wanted to know something about... The, listen, I've got a different take on this with Sandra. Sandalene's a, a campaigner and been campaigning brilliantly. She's kept us in the, in the, in, in the public for years. Eh? I've just come out and said it. They've been dicing about for years, no, no one to name, name this person and name that person. I've just come out and said it. And eh, I, I didn't mean to offend, but okay, listen, sometimes you have to offend eh? Um, I, I come to the conclusion one day, Jane, Jane, when I started writing this, I, I didn't even want to write in the in the, the form I wrote. But I mean, I looked, I'm thinking, that's a wee boy. <laughs> you know, like, I was looking at like a, a court case and trying to write all professional, and I was standing there looking and thinking, he's 14. He's a fucking bear, and he's a child. It doesn't matter how you dress. I didn't even mean if he's guilty, he should have been treated better. But he's 14. I'm thinking 14, imagine sitting in your house at 14 with your mum. You've got nobody in the world to protect you. They're sort of middle class here. They, they, they live in a wee um, middle class scheme. He, he, his dad's not here, he's got a big brother. But you've got nobody to protect him. You've got the, you've, got the, you've seen the media, how they work, eh? You've got the daily Goodness. record. Mm -hmm. oh, outside your house 24-7. You've got the police telling you, you're a wee bastard. You've killed a wee lassie and you're 14. If anybody... You say something the other day, what's right? Well, I, I genuinely think I've done right, James. I've done really wrong in my life, eh? Everybody has, you. Eh? In 2003, when I walked, took a boy at a police station, I thought I was doing right. And eh, as I say, listen, I walked away from it for a few years because I had to go I had to go and do other things. I had to live and make a living. And and then, and then I've been away from it and then I've come back and then went away and come back. And this time with COVID, I sat down again with, with Sandra Lee and, and we pulled out crime scene photographs. And see the, the mayor started looking at them and the mayor started reading the case again and re, re, refresh my mind, I, 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 I go angry. So if I have said things that upset people, that's just tough. Mm -hmm. Tough. So what do you think, who do you think killed Jodie Jones? Who do I think killed Jodie Jones? I think your own her, opinion. I think, man, only my opinion, I think her brother killed her. I think Joseph killed her. He was the last man. And the, only, the, the, the reason I'm going to say that is Joseph Jones, the last man that's seen jo, Jodie alive, right? Uh, 15 minutes before she was killed Joseph Jones seen walking behind her he's got a history of violence towards his sister he's psychotic his psychotic drugs were weird enough he's smoking bucket bongs that make him paranoid um, his, his MO is dragging ragdoll and him dragging him about with hair Jody Jones has been dragged about with hair um, he, he wore a, 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 a backpack with a large bowie knife in it because he was so paranoid he's pulled out to people plenty of people and very violent, you know, listen, um, he's a violent man, he's not a, a gangster guy, violent, but he's a, right, and, and, and Jody was killed under a frenzied attack, now, if he can build a case, the police, 20 police officers, well, how many police officers can build a case over a year against Luke Mitchell, I could build a case against Joseph Jones, myself, without 20 police, and I'm not going to, the, the, and I could have got a guilty against Joseph Jones in a court, I believe that. And that's only just me working myself. I believe Joseph Jones killed his sister. And I believe his two pals, John Ferris and Gordon Dickey, um, helped him escape for the scene. And I think David Dickey went back up and cleaned it. Do you know, one other thing, dogs. You'll, you'll find this out in Possil. There'll be dog men in Possil, I'll tell you this. You can use bleach and ammonia to, to hamper dogs in a search. Do you know that? Yeah. Right, a protected site. Right, so... The guy, David Dickey, goes over to where Jody's lying at, say, six at night with his nine working spaniel dogs, right? And he didn't come forward, but his son comes forward five days later, and in his statement, he says, Mom, my dad went back over to the site. So instead of the police going to David Dickey and treating him as a suspect, or even a person of interest, right, they invite him back over to the locus and use him as an expert witness. 
So he's now trampling over the site. He's got blood on his boots, but they can't even tie the blood into him being there anywhere near the murder site because the police took him there. Then another set of police go to Seuss and they start asking him about sexual relationships and how many times he had made sexual advances toward Jody. But the police are yet one set of police are using him as an, a witness at the locus. Think of that. If he, if he if he had been part of that and his DNA is over Jody or at the locus, it got cancelled out because the police took him back there. Now, five weeks later, weeks, I can't, the days I get mixed up or after years and too much. But they bring apart. So the years a guy called David Dickey is an expert witness, right? First, imagine that. Then they bring up the dog team for Yorkshire. Same dog team that was Madeline McCann, right? Different dogs, obviously, but same team. And they bring them up and they, and they take them into Dalkeith and do you know what they say? Uh, our dogs are hampered by a bleach-like substance. <laughs> ammonia. Somebody poured ammonia where Jody was found. People had sprayed the site with ammonia. Who? They never investigated. Never checked. Me, personally, I think it was David Dickey. How many people do you think were involved in the whole thing? The well, cover-up? The... Uh, the known the body where like, the known who killed her. Like, how many people? Oh, I think. Well, I think Joseph killed his sister. I think David Dickey and Gordon Dickey, and John Ferris knew and helped them escape. And I think I think Jodie's mum, stepdad, knew. I don't know what parts they played. No, there's always puzzled me about my James right, and you're a young man, so if it worked this. Jod, Jody's mum on the night she was killed, right? She says that she leaves the house, right? She's only the drink. I'm no slagging her here. I'm just telling facts, right? She's only double vodkas for 12 o'clock during the day, right? And she's pissed. And the guy, Alan Owens, he, he works in the cleansing. He comes in for work. And uh, he says Janine's in the house, right? But then when the stocky man mentioned it, oh, it was Joseph. So he changes his statement for Janine to Joseph. But at six o'clock that night, they, they say they leave the house, right? to go up to a cemetery to visit her ex-husband's grave. Now, if you're a young man in the, I don't know, 30s or whatever, right, and you've got a, a girlfriend and you're pissed and you come in for a hard day's work and you want to go up to a cemetery go and visit your girlfriend's ex-man's grave. I found all that pretty strange. I always thought that she left the house because she knew something had happened. But that's uh, that's only for their conscience. I can't prove that. A lot of people tell me things and, listen... So it's, it's a village, eh? And when you go there, people talk to you, other people don't. But um, I believe the mum knows. I knew that, I believe the granny, Alice Walker, who's now dead, she she washed clothes, tell witnesses not to come forward. She knew exactly where to go that night. Uh, I think she knew, and I think Jodie's mum and stepdad knew, although they never had nothing to do with it. And uh, I genuinely don't think they try to set up Luke Mitchell. I just think they try to protect her son. And Luke Mitchell just happened to... The full guy. Uh, Where do you go forward for it here, Squat? Yeah, hey, well, listen, we're waiting on the crown. We're waiting on the crown coming back and telling us exactly what I've destroyed. Uh, I, I've got a funny feeling J James have destroyed everything. I think of the um, uh, there's, there's forensics. We, what, what there's forensics we want tested again, right? There's things that were never tested in 2003. Uh, the commission tested their trousers again. I think 2013. They are. Trousers they only zipping out, they tried and they couldn't find nothing else, right? But Alan Jameson of the Forensic Institute in Glasgow, he's always maintained that he would like to test other things in the case. So if they're not destroyed certain things, we, we would like to um, get access to them. I, mean, I believe now we will get access to them because the Crown are now in a, a weak position because I've admitted that they've destroyed evidence. Um, and, and, and try again. Try forensically, James, to like, re examine us. Or um, I don't want to get a guy away, but we're putting pressure on people. We're putting pressure on people. Um, the guy Ferris, we're going to go and visit him soon. No, me, you know, but journalists, brave journalists, there's, there's a couple now standing up here. And um, we're going to go try and speak to Ferris and Dickie and, and Joseph Jones. And um, there's pressure. I know uh, people tell me they're, they're saying things now and they're getting. Me people personally, are getting nervous. Aye, people are getting nervous, aye, and it only takes one person to be living with all that guilt and regret to have a breakdown and go. Do you know what? This is the truth. Truth, because somebody knows that. Listen, they're decent guys. It. See, how do you see this without being twenty year old? Your pal's done something real, real bad. Twenty, I would have. 
probably try to get my pal away. He's best like, pal, man. Is like, and he's come with a problem. He says, can you help me? You're always going to back him up. <laughs> Obviously, if you go to this scene and you're thinking, shit, man, what have I done? But you're already there. Once and that's the scary that thing. Step, James, yeah. once you take that step to get my way. And if this guy is that's as crazy true. as you say, you don't know if he's threatening people as well. Do you know what I mean? Or scared to them. go and help them. Or they're scared them. Listen, the guy John Ferris moved away to Ayrshire. He come back and he was in Mayfield and Joe's up the pavement with a car trying to run him over. He's a he's a ah, he's a he's a violent, violent man, you know. Do you ever worry that somebody could try and take you oh, out? Listen, that's part of the game, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> because of the names you're mentioning, kind of just oh, I mean, listen. Hey, I, over the years, James, I've been in five years now. I met me a dangerous man than him. I'm not saying he's no dangerous. Well, listen, if you can do that to his sister and and, and I know he's um dishly vile, ah, I suppose. Okay, okay, listen, that pass. Has to happen. Um, I wouldn't worry. I, I didn't even know worried. My, can I tell you something, James? I, I'm actually proud, pal. I've done all the things in my life that you're ashamed of. You know, no shame. That's, a, that's everybody a, has. Of course, yeah. But there's certain things I've done that I was quite proud of. Do you know when I got older, walked down my lays and that myself and all that, right? But this, oh, I, I'm genuinely proud of myself, pal. Um, when I stood up in 2003, nobody was, you know, like everybody, Mitchell and all that. I thought this is just not right. Biz. In 2003, I was an ex-con, made uneducated, so it was easy to say, oh, he's fucking daft and mm -hmm. this and that. Ah, he's not clever enough. They can't tell me that anymore, James. Yeah, listen, I, I sit with sheriffs and QCs and KCs and all that, having cups of coffee and, and intellectual conversation about law and anything else. I'm not, stu I'm not a stupid man. So in 2003, I was insecure. You're a laddie for the street. Not a laddie, but you know, and you're, and you're going against all this tide. No, no. No, no, pal. I am. Um, I know. I'm. I'm pretty good. So if um, John Ferris and Gordon Dickey, listen, Gordon Dickey's a big brute, a man as well. And uh, I interviewed his dad. This is quite funny. I interviewed his dad in um, 2011, right? And and he says to me, "Come on, we'll go in the field, son, and carry it, get this conversation." I had a briefcase and a suit. I said, "I right, go then." What? Go then? And then we walked in the field, and he just kept talking. And then he says to me, but you'll not be interviewing my son like that. I say, okay, no bother, no, and I just walked away. And they say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, the, Luke Mitchell was uh, ID'd, allegedly, on a path, talking to Jody at five to five, five, aye, five to five, around about that time. But I remember called Andrea Bryson, it's always been questionable, she went to court, could you see the man you seen that day? No. They showed her mug shots, a uh, boys of 12 and 13, 14, and then they showed her a, uh, Instamatic. Do you remember the Kodak Instamatic? Mm -hmm. One one of Remy Luke Mitchell, because he had never been in a mug shot. And she went, oh, I think I, that's him. So they had him now in East Houses, right? He was never up there. So anyway, we, we, we meet Andrea Bryson in 2011, 2009, 2011. We send her a letter, we chop her door, and she phones her office. So we go to meet her. I say, on a solicitor, a great man. And uh, we get to the home, right? And she's here with her husband, which is fine, because I wouldn't meet lawyers. Oh, morning, right? You take somebody away. But her mother in law was there. I found that quite strange, but all we asked her is one question Miss Bryson, when you go to the High Court and you've seen Luke Mitchell, you couldn't identify him. Identify him. Had he changed his appearance? And very polite and very soft spoken, get out of the house. The mother in law jumped up, get out, get out. As the years went on, we started investigating it. Some of the Bryson family have spoke to me, you know, and um, Andrea Bryson never seen anybody. Andrea Bryson was driving along the road, allegedly her husband seen a couple arguing and because he had mental health trouble and drug troubles, he got his wife to come forward. She was doing the best because she knew the Jones family. Everybody in Dalkeith wanted to help catch the killer and she was doing her wee bit for the community. And she had ID Luke Mitchell, but when she went to court, she couldn't ID him. Mm -hmm. Fair play for coming forward, Scott, and just, ah, thanks very much, and just having the balls to just say how it is for your side, for ah. the evidence and everything you've got. Like I say, the newspapers... <laughs> Luke's conviction, your story, the other three parts I've done, people can make up their own assumption and, and decide what they want, but end of the day, Luke's still in prison, there's still an innocent girl being killed, I don't know 100% facts of everything, but I've got a rough idea, and for what I, I've gathered, that, that kid is innocent, but would you like to finish up on anything, Scott? Yeah. Luke Mitchell never killed Jodie Jones, James. Didn't he kill her? <laughs> I'd invite anybody, anybody. Listen, you're inviting anybody to come in your podcast, right, and take a walk. Sit and listen to you. I invite any of them, any doubters. And after this, I'm going to show you medical record because I doubt you know I can't go public and 
and, and print. I can, they keep, oh, put this through public. I can't do that. It's, it prejudice cases. and right. You can I, get to jail for that. Yes, yeah, so after this, I'm going to show you medical records. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, but I'll invite anybody, any doubters, police officers, lawyers, anybody, anybody. Come a come walk with me and I'll take them and show them a walk. And at the end of that walk, you tell me that Luke Mitchell called you. Joe Jones, you, you're not able to do it. Could Luke have had any involvement in this case? <sighs> James, I've looked at it. I've, I've genuinely, listen, for, every time I looked at it, I always try to find Luke Mitchell to be guilty. Does that make sense? Listen, I had to go away for a few years and different things and work on that other thing. I always come back to it. And every time I've looked, I've always tried to find someone that put Luke Mitchell in, in the frame. Nothing, Paul. There's nothing. They made up stories. Listen, I'll say this, and, 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 and Luke Mitchell was a weirdo. And he admits that himself, right? He carried knives and he, and he acted daft. You no, know, he burned himself with fags and he always had a blade. But he's a hash smoker in 2003. It was sober. <laughs> you need an axe to carry, right? So he always had a knife. Okay. Uh, maybe a bit too close to the relationship with him and his mum, a bit funny, but there's no cruelty animals. There's no deceit. There's no criminality. There's no none. And uh, his Did mother... People say there was things hanging through his door, dead oh, animals and that, though. The biggest, the biggest rumour ever in, in Dalkeith in 2003, it wasn't Luke Mitchell, it was his brother, Shane, right? Who was hanging animals... Dog hung his uh, dog for the door and tortured it, and he was never at the Ro Roslyn Lee Hospital, right? With mental institute in Dalkeith. It wasn't just a little shite. Sorry for swearing, but shite. Shane Mitchell had never been near the Roslyn Lee Hospital in his life. The only person that had been near Roslyn Lee Hospital in his life was no Luke's brother, but Jody's brother. The only person who was torturing animals in this, apart from Mark Kane. Mark Kane, the man I took to the police for, oh, James, the cruelly animals are another level, right? But Joseph Jones also, a torture the animals. Can I ask you just a logical, ah, this is always, this is me. If you have a psychotic fit or you have an outburst and you're a boxer, you, you throw punches, eh? If you're, if, if you're a karate guy, you kick. But if you're in the chopping up animals and you have a psychotic fit, what are you going to do? Uh -huh. The thing is, if Jody was getting punched in that hair pulp, there would surely have been DNA. They must have been oh, wearing hundred, gloves then. Well, listen, Kate, they've got Luke Mitchell doing me. Oh, they've got Luke Mitchell doing me in his baraclavas, gloves. Uh, I think Prof Professor Basuto, he was a police pathologist. Listen, I've worked with Professor Basuto two or three times, and he's a lovely man and a brilliant professional. But if I say, um, I need to find this in this murder, he'll find it for you. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? For anybody watching, Scott, that's maybe. Mm -hmm. You don't know who watches. Say somebody wants to come forward and in new information. How can they get in contact with you? Listen, I'm on Twitter. Everybody knows my Twitter. Yeah, my face. I never use Facebook, but I use Facebook Messenger. And uh, and my email address is scf65 at hotmail.co.uk. Again, Scotty boy, would you like to finish up on anything? Uh, ah, just please finish. Luke Mitchell did not call Jody Jones. In your book, people can get this on Amazon. It's a fascinating read for anybody interested in this case. But for coming on today, Scott, telling your Thank story, you very much, appreciate bro. it. Thank you. Keep fighting a good fight. Ah, God bless you for the Try my best. Thank you.